Well, that is basically the growth unit that I designed for uh, the continuation of our experiments. Um, uh, they are very flat. They are two, three meet, uh, uh, millimeters. You, you can take it uh, as a single layer, also as a uh, doubled or stapled uh, layers of uh, these uh, sidewalls. And the sidewalls are composed of a very simple material that you find in every uh, constructor shop. It's a double-sided uh, glue. And the glue uh, is uh, normally used for uh, gluing mirrors in your bathroom. <laughs> that is why they are resistant to uh, uh, water. So and that is, uh, that is an important part uh, for uh, the growth chambers, because if, if they cannot resist water, they it just will decompose and uh, you... Just it. Okay. Uh, then I put it on a second one. That is important because uh, it should not glue on the surface, because you cannot remove it afterwards. It's very sticky. So I put it here. And then I have uh, the measurements of let's say 3.8 centimeters, which is the width of this tape. But it doesn't matter, it's scalable. So you can cut it in, in any size you want. You can make it much smaller too. Just cut it through. And so you can remove this part, put it here, cut it on the other side. Okay, then I can remove remove the internal part. Is there, is there actually any sidewall? Um, they are any yeah, yeah they are here, but they need uh, one hour to grow to start to grow because oh. they are disturbed and uh, usually it takes an hour until they oh. resume growth. They don't like I don't know, they, they don't like lights. They um, don't like lights either. So it's hard to see. That's why I have this. Uh, yeah. What's the rubber in, in yeah. English? Moskumi. Moskumi. <laughs> okay. Uh, Moss rubber. <laughs> it's all very Are there any questions from the audience? Somebody I could pass the mic to. If and then I cut, I cut the, um, the base plate, so to say. And I like it because it's very thin. And then I can place on the frame. See? Yeah. On the base plate. Okay, so it looks like this. And that's the start. Uh, now I need to put agar. And it's also a, a thing that we designed a little bit. So I have uh, here. Yeah. So fertig. Yeah. But sticks in, inside. What's the composition of this agar? That's just water agar. Water agar. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. 1.2. Mm -hmm. I think it's not completely well done this time. So agar is a growth medium made of algae, right? Yeah, it's a kind of it's more artificial later, later agar. And you, can, you can gelate a liquid by this. Yeah, okay. yeah. Uh, they are not perfect, I should say. And then I put it here. Cut off. Turn around. That's now the slimy part of the activity. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and then carefully I push the other down on the surface and that is the point when to uh, inoculate with the slime mold. Uh, I saw that the agar in this case the film it's a film like uh, preparation of agar with the two, it's put between two transparencies so you have an even film otherwise it would not work. Uh, and this film was very thick, so with a single uh, frame, uh, it is uh, it's, it would not carry much of uh, the plasmodium because it would it is a high risk that it will touch the upper surface. Uh, so I would normally put a second frame here, uh, but no, I, I do this in one row, so I put the stapling of the frames uh, all at once. 
So now I can put uh, the slime mold in the center. Either you take a piece of plasmodium or uh, you use microplasmodium by fractioning uh, an existing macroplasmodium. So you just swirl it, just, I mean, it's a lab procedure. Uh, but you can produce uh, small pieces of uh, globular uh, plasmodium that you can spread in a regular pattern on the surface. And it's quite useful if you impose an image to uh, direct or to see the reactions to light of the, of the community of microplasmodia. Okay, and then when this is done, I remove, or I can remove the uh, upper uh, protecting paper before um, at this stage. And then I use another transparency. And it's pre-cut normally, in this case here. Yes. And put it on top, and cut it to size. And it should be finished. So that is uh, the growth chamber that we call uh, uh, implementation of a, a chip for the growth. And the, the options we have with this are quite uh, numerous because uh, of course, you can put light patterns on the surface of this uh, device, uh, or you can insert needles on the sidewalls to, in, uh, uh, to transfer liquids uh, that could uh, promote or uh, impede growth of a physerum. So it's kind of a, a chemical sensor you can implement. You could also glue it on the, on the skin yeah, with another <laughs> type of tape, and then you have a, a supplement uh, of your smartwatch. <laughs> the biological smartwatch. Okay, that's it. <laughs> Thank you. I'm just wondering whether one could, could use just tailor-made, uh, ready-made slide frames that yeah. you can buy. That is possible too, but uh, they are not, uh, they are thinner. Yeah. And I, I'd like, uh, they are thicker, and I'd like to have um, very thin uh, transparencies uh, to have a direct illumination on the surface. Because if you have a thick glass slide, yeah. which is 1.2 milli, uh, is it? no, 12, it's 1.2 millimeter, yeah, uh, the normal glass slide, then you have a lot of uh, lateral effects of the light, mm -hmm. and uh, it wouldn't be as precise as with this setup. Did you try that? No. Yeah. We are about to. Yeah, it's not completely. Yeah. Yeah. But with the glass light, we tried this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It was uh, not precise enough. Yeah, I have a question. What, can do, what kind of relationship does um, one slime mold have to another one cell to another? Did you check that? Or you know, uh, yes, uh, in a way, because uh, this actually prepared here, you may see it in the afternoon when the meeting is finished, are two different strains. So it's Australia fighting against Japan. <laughs> <laughs> I avoided to use uh, the uh, US train, which was exist because I want to ask DARPA for money. <laughs> uh, no, uh, it's, uh, so, and we will see uh, they compete for the space. Then, so you, you should see some patterns uh, among they the. They just. Uh, okay. It's just a competition. They avoid. They repel. They don't kill, but they repel each other. Mm -hmm. But, they can but if, if you have different species of slime molds, uh, it doesn't matter because uh, they won't react on the uh, excretions of the other slime mold species. And that, is, that has also to do ecologically with having different food sources. So one slime mold, for example, prefers fungi and the other one uh, prefers a certain type of uh, bacteria, then they wouldn't get in conflict. If they compete for the same piece of can, oat, for example, you have the war between them. <laughs> And that's because they evolved in different ecological niches? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, I was just wondering if you could clarify for us what you meant by um, model organism. Like, um, I'm somewhat familiar with the concept, but within like a scientific context or also within artistic? And why you think that this is... Within artistic, I can't uh, say a model in art is something different from a model organism in biology. and. Uh, Sometimes I don't know what I prefer better. <laughs> a model organism in biology, biological science is, is an organism that, uh, where the focus is spent on. It's, it's not something special. It's, uh, it's just what most people study in more detail. 
it's a depth uh, study organism. Um, well, what is it that would make something then ideal as a model organism, and therefore why you feel that um, slime models should be one? I, I, for for a couple of reasons. I mean, for, for uh, let's take a biochemist for example. A biochemist is very much interested in lipid uh, metabolism, so all, uh, has to do with uh, lipids, uh, management of lipids in the body, and, and, uh, in relation to adipositas, for example, uh, being fed. And the slime mold is actually a very fat organism because it has so many membranes, and the basic component of a membrane is fat. So for anyone who is studying fat, uh, uh, is, uh, re does research on fat metabolism, could use the slime mold as a model organism because it's, a, it's, it's kind of a distantly related but a proxy in biology, and it has so much uh, to do with all these membranes and fat it has. Talking about fat, <laughs> lunch behind us. <laughs> Um, so thank you very much for this really really interesting session. I think it gave like it's really it gave us a very good kind of impression of I don't know like the material reality of experimental science and that like experiments don't have to be like large hadron colliders, you know, but can also be like performed with things from a model or next door. So and I think it's actually for non scientists quite an interesting insight. So thank you very much for this. And we can didn't, hmm? didn't show you all the images. Oh, yeah, yeah. It didn't show us this. So the, the little bit <laughs> because that's just a chamber. Of course. Yeah. You want to have make an image. You want to have, you want to the analysis. Yeah. So that's true. Yeah. Next time. Next time. So thank you, and we can obviously continue the conversation over the okay. lunch. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.